Hello everyone, it looks like we are live. I am actually have headphones in and I'm listening to the music. I'm gonna see if, oh, why am I getting a Windows thing? Why are you popping up? Oh, please don't mess up my stream. Um, oh good, something updated right now, that's convenient. Anyway, I'm listening to music through headphones because I didn't want to take them off. I wonder if I'll be able to, to actually stream while doing this, I don't know. It, it feels kind of weird, but also really nice. Um, let's see, do we have audio and everything okay? I'm gonna wait and, okay, we do, there it is. Um, so tonight, we are working in acrylics. I am going to be painting a long tail tit, and I probably shouldn't say that on YouTube. I don't know how well that's going to go. Anyway, a really cute fluffy little bird. And I'm working on a Fredericks watercolor canvas board just for transparency. Fredericks did provide me with the canvas I'm using, although they're already the only brand that I use. The reason that I'm going with a watercolor canvas board, one, they're actually really easy to ship, but it's um, really smooth, really smooth. I don't use this for watercolor, I use them for acrylic and sometimes oil painting because it's so smooth that means my blending is gonna be easier, it's gonna look nicer, and it's really easy to get that super fine detail. If your canvas is too rough, too bumpy, your results are gonna be rough and bumpy. So let's go ahead and I think that's it. Um, you're able to bid on this. The link for that is, if you're in the US, is in the video description. Um, oh, I have a couple fun announcements. The first one, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I had someone contact me on Facebook wanting to know if I had any cat and dog colored pencil tutorials. Turns out I have lots, of, you know, not lots, but a couple of cats, no dogs. So for those of you who are in the US, and you can start emailing me this tonight, you can start right now. I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm gonna paint one of your dogs, or not paint, I'm gonna draw it in colored pencil, only in the US because I need to be able to ship it to you. Um, and what the contest is gonna be, email me, lisa at lawcree.com, just put a Lisa in front of that at lawcree.com, email a high resolution photo. It cannot be a photograph taken by a professional photographer. It has to be a photo you have rights to. And in you sending this to me, that means you are giving me rights to, to display this on my social media, to use that photo for whatever I want, for art lessons, because I'm gonna make a lesson out of this. So, but when I'm done with it, I will ship you the finished portrait of your dog. Dogs only, does not matter the breed. And the way that I'm going to choose the winner is anyone's photo, I, I'm going to separate, because a lot of you, are going to send me photos that I just can't work from, that are bad angles, bad lighting, too small, you name it. So I'm gonna separate all the photos that I think would make for a good lesson, that would make for a good portrait into one batch. I will assign them all a number and I'm just gonna use a random number generator to choose from the batch of usable photos that you send me. In your email, you can send me as many photos as you want. I'll choose the best one that goes into the draw, you know, that I can use from that. Um, only one email though, so multiple photos per email, but please just send one email per person so that I don't get super spammed. So yes, if you want a chance to have your dog drawn in colored pencil by me, it will be an eight by 10, 11 by 14. I don't know what it's gonna be, one of those. Um, go ahead and email lisa at lawcree.com, the best photo taken by you, not a professional photograph. I'm not gonna be violating their, their copyrights, but t send me a photo of your dog. Only dogs, any breed of dog. Okay, so <coughs> let's go ahead and get started with this guy. So the first thing that I need to do on this is paint my background. Ugh, I have a board. I need to get a more like stronger board back there for this purpose, because that's really annoying the way it moves. It makes it a little better. But I'm going to be painting this a combination of white with a little bit of gray mixed in. And let's see. I'm going to use, I need my mop brushes. Let's get a couple of those ready to go. And I'm gonna use a Teflon bristled filbert to apply the paint. We'll be using black and white. So let's scooch that up because that is not showing on the camera. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to just, I'm gonna paint it white first and then throw black on top. So let's, oh, don't fall in there. Let's go ahead and get this wet. I'm just gonna mist it with my fine mist sprayer. The link for the, the link, uh, for the supplies that I'm using are in the video description. There are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click those little links, it does me a bit of a favor there. And with homeowner's insurance going up $300 a month, I just found that out tonight, out of nowhere, just here's $300. So it's three times as much as what you used to pay. Yeah, I need those Amazon affiliate links. So let's go ahead and paint this in. I'm smiling like I'm not actually crying inside right now. $300 a month, who, like, how did that go up? Three, ah, uh, sorry. Okay, focus Lisa, stop complaining about personal stuff. 
Okay. And I'm just gonna get that solid wet. I've got a little bit too much water on here, so I'll have to, like, <laughs> that is going to take a little bit to dry. I've got a hair in there, I need to make sure I scoop that out. Where did you come from, hair? Oh, I see that, Kirsten. Okay, don't tell the boys. I gotta get this background down first. It's one of those stages where you can't let it dry. Do you guys, when you're painting at home, do you, your family members ever get frustrated with that? I remember when I was younger, when Matt, we first got married, Matt would not really understand my whole, I can't do it right now, I can't stop this, I can't, I'm at a stage where it can't dry, I can't take any breaks right now. I remember him being like, seriously? Just, just, just for a minute? And it's like, it's acrylics, it's gonna dry. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of black. I'm gonna mix that in with my white so that it's not too dark. And I just wanna get some shadows in the background. You can see now why it was so important. Look how dark that is. Oh, it's not dark enough on your screen. Never mind. I'll have to fix that in just a moment here. It's much darker in person. And I want some to be solid white, but some just hint of shadows in the background. Now I'm going to take a mop brush and I'm going to very lightly go in little half circles and fan that out. I'm not trying to blend my white into the gray. I'm trying to get rid of my brush strokes. Now, if this brush gets too wet, it starts picking up too much paint, it actually starts creating brush strokes, <clears throat> excuse me, instead of getting rid of them. So that's why I always have a second one sitting here ready to go. Luckily, that wasn't too wet, so the mop brush worked really well. And I don't have to do additional layers there. I'm just gonna go over the edges little bit there because it was picking up paint. Okay, before I dry this, I am going to rinse the brushes out and then I will dry the canvas and then we will give the boys their due. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw you perk up your ears. You don't know anything yet. You just lay there and be cute, bad cow. And then when, the way that I clean these, the mop brushes, because I need them to be dry and ready to go if I, well, I won't need it again in this painting, but like if I'm doing a bigger project and I'm gonna need it again, I will only rinse the tip of the bristles because that's really the only place that paint should be. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and I just dry that off as much as possible. You can use a hair drawer, but I actually find that this goes faster. Hair drawer, suddenly had a weird accent. I blame the music in my ear. Amberlynn, by the way, if you also want to listen to really good music, Bonus, when you have YouTube Premium, you get YouTube Music, and it includes a lot of really good stuff. It's way better than Amazon Prime Music, like by a lot. Okay, now I can rinse the bigger brush, get everybody clean, and let's hopefully not blow a fuse by starting the hairdryer this time. I've got the computer on a battery backup though, so at least I won't lose you guys if that happens. We just lose lights. I just made a little smudge there on that. I will definitely be, actually, I can probably get rid of it. Just take a little bit of water. And I lifted the paint. Crap, hold on, I need to do a little bit of repairs here. You know what, I guess I'm repainting that background. I made it worse by smudging it, it lifted a chunk, like in a really weird way. That was odd. 
I need to make sure the bird goes in front of that. Okay, so we're going to do this background twice. It happens. I was so close to being done. I'm not ignoring you, Kristen. I know you gave the boys rewards, and I just am apparently going to take all the time. Luckily, this is a super easy background. See, now, see why I'm so glad that that uh, mop brush is all ready to go and dry, because I apparently did need it again. The only way for me to fix that was to just repaint the whole background because I scrubbed an area off and the paint wasn't dry all the way and it lifted. There's no fixing it besides just paint everything in order to get it smooth. So not in the plan, but it does work. It's starting to dry. Okay, now let's get a little bit of gray. I think I want a little bit more white. That was a good example of what happens if you go onto your next layer, or in my case, stick your finger in it, when it's not dry yet. It will lift up the previous layer. And when I say lift up, I mean it was, it, it was like a texture. You could see a hole in the paint because the paint is a little bit thicker. So yay, this is clean and dry. And we're just going to do that again. Starting to dry a bit too much though, because that canvas was a little bit warm. See, I think listening to music in my ear while I work tonight is helping because that did not stress me out even a little bit. It was more of just an eye roll moment because Amberlynn makes everything better. Hmm. Kind of like this layer better anyway. I am not unhappy with this at all. Okay, I want to be more careful this time. So again, rinsing this brush just by the tips in the water. And we will dry that. I need more paper towels. I don't even know how I got that smudge on there, like where that color of smudge came from in the first place. That was weird. Um, other brush. Okay, let's dry this. And no touching. No catching. Scrub it. I always touch it to see if it's kind of dry. But after what just happened, I need to not do that. I'm touching. We're okay. My, I checked my hands that they didn't have any paint on them this time. I don't know if you can even hear me over the hair dryers. It doesn't really matter. I didn't say anything important. Okay. And we have for the boys from Kirsten who said for the doggos, Happy New Year. They know, look at, they've been waiting. You guys ready for your super chat? Come on, come get your super chat. So fun side story. I've been trying because Wade will bark at me when I go to feed him sometimes, like every other week. It's not often. They don't, they're not barkers, but it's so funny. I was thinking, well, how cute would it be if I taught him to bark on command? So I watch some videos on YouTube and I do dog training. I've never taught a dog to bark, but watch some videos. The problem is when I try to get them excited, they just give up. They're like, oh, you're not going to give the treat. We'll just go lay down. Like, lazy as boys. So, good boy. Say, thank you, Kirsten. So, yeah, teaching Wade to speak on command was not working. He had no idea what I wanted. He just kept less resting his head on Wade, or Gibson's back and looking at me. And then they both went and lay down like, if you're not going to give the treat, you're not going to, like, whatever. We're just going to go lay down. That's it. Go lay down. Lay down. 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 Oh, other announcement I had that I have not shown you yet. I have a box opening of art supplies to do after the painting tonight. Okay, lay down, boys. Wade, cow, lay down. That's a good cow. Okay, let's see. I think we're all nice and dry. 
That's certainly one of the drawbacks when you've got this much white on a canvas. You have to be so careful. And I'm actually really nervous too when I varnish them. I make sure when I varnish it, I varnish the white area first. I don't drag, like let's say, well in this case, the bird with the blacks, I'm not gonna be dragging my brush, my sponge brush that I apply the varnish with, across the black into the white because sometimes it'll leave, even though it's been dry for days, it'll leave just a little bit of it picks up and almost not reactivates, but you just sometimes get a smudge and you would never notice if it, if it was any other color but white. On white, you can see it. So when I varnish, I'm very careful, white first, and then I go and do whatever has the darker colors. So there we go. Okay, next we are going to take, I've already drawn out my subject on a piece of tra uh, transfer paper. Oh, I need to change the lighting too. Actually, that's not that far off. I wanna show you over here. It is a little bit darker. You can see my, I've got more variation in my background. I'll wait to change the lighting until we see if the bird is overexposed or not. You never know with these cameras. So what I'm gonna do is tape my subject to the canvas. right about there. I'm gonna scooch them over a little bit more. I want them up higher though. There. Now make sure when you tape it, you tape it on two sides, not just in the middle. Otherwise this starts sliding back and forth in a not pleasant way. Oh, this is giving me trouble there. Okay, I'm going to be using black transfer paper. This is one is old low Cornell, um, which you can't really, I don't think you can find that anymore. There's the alternative, I don't have the package over here, is Ryle Langnickel, I think. Hold on one second, we've got, <coughs> Matt just texted me, he wants Pepsi and tamales. I'm guessing he's watching some sort of sporting game if it is, what a random thing. I want Pepsi and tamales too. I can't have soda though because I get too addicted to it. So it's one, like the one thing in my life I had to say never again, never do I get soda. Like I can have bubble water, but Pepsi is my favorite thing in life. So like if I could just live off Pepsi, I wouldn't need anything else at all. Like I don't even need food. Okay, maybe cheesecake sometimes. But um, yeah, so. I just don't allow myself to ever have it because I have no self-control when it comes to Pepsi. Okay, now I need a stylus. I need to make sure there is no oil pastel still on it from my recent project. Ooh, there was too. A lot of oil pastel came off on that. Clean those off. And now I'm going to stick, which side? Which side? Sure I got the right side. Yep, I'm just gonna slide that under. And normally I don't like using the darker transfer paper. Whenever possible, I go with white. Black doesn't always erase real well, but in this case, I don't really have any option, uh, any choice. And I'm just gonna trace over. little chicken leg. You just move the transfer paper. Like you don't have to have the transfer paper the same size as the whole painting. You can see I can just slide it as I need. When I say slide, I lift and move it. Don't drag it across because it can leave a smudge. If it's a small smudge, it should erase pretty well. Uh, let's not press our luck. it just pushed my nail on part of it over the white so I may have to do some repairs there yay no I didn't and I'm missing something didn't go right with his beak that looks better Yeah, good enough. 
Okay, we'll move that all to the side and I can go ahead and remove now my transfer paper. Now I recommend, or your tracing paper, save this because if you start painting and you're like, something went wrong, I don't think the eye's in the right place anymore. And that happens, you get a little crazy and the eye ends up, you know, a little bit further down the body than it should be. You can put your transfer paper, tracing your transfer paper back over and double check your work. So it makes it easy to fix things that go terribly wrong. Now this actually, I'll show you over here. You can see the line drawings a little bit better than you can on the easel just because that over, or, um, overexposes it, but there we go. Okay, so now, whoops. Trying to fix my OBS doing something weird here. There we go. Okay, I am going, I'm gonna start with the black. I'm gonna just block some stuff in. Let's see what brushes I wanna use. We'll use this little round. So this one is a Simply Simmons number eight. Oh, that black is really dry. That's from a very long time ago. And I'm just gonna use this to sort of map out where everything on the bird goes. little eye. Now there's a little yellow area in there. I want to leave it open because yellow is not going to show up over the black. I would have to paint it white again. So I'll try to leave that open. If I get a little crazy and fill it in, it's not the end of the world. I just have to go back and paint it white again. Oops, too much water. Let's just touch that to my paper towel to dry some of it off. Reload. And I always mix water in with my paints. And if you're new here, and I inevitably always get this question, I heard that you can't mix water with acrylic paint, so that you shouldn't mix very much, and you should use mixing mediums and all those things. Yeah, that video, you probably saw um, the same one everyone saw that turned off comments, was from like, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. This woman, I don't know where she got her information, but it was completely inaccurate. She made up a bunch of things like saying honeycomb structure and this and that, and the bond bindings come apart because the atoms and the molecules and the BS, she made it up. Maybe she didn't make it up. Maybe somebody else told her this, probably some college professor, because we know they share true information. Um, they just make stuff up too. Um, college art teachers are almost always the worst, with very few exceptions. Um, but anyway, she turned off the comments because so many people were telling her yeah that's not true but she was telling people that you're you know use mixing mediums which you can use i just don't like them because they make they give the paint a weird texture that just doesn't work for my techniques but yeah she my favorite part about that was when everyone told her hey no that's not true was solution instead of correcting it or taking the video down and going well i should maybe educate myself more on this was just take turn off comments so and that video still is one of the top ranked acrylic painting videos on youtube Thanks, YouTube. There's a little mat in here. Um, so, yeah, it drives me crazy. But everyone, because of that video, it's a scare tactic. The worst mistake acrylic painters make. Um, yeah, listening to you is the worst mistake acrylic painters make. Um, but, yeah, that's complete nonsense. You can absolutely use acrylic or water with your acrylics. And you can use mixing mediums if you want. I just don't like the results that they give. I'm not saying I've never seen a pretty painting created with them, but I feel like you're almost fighting with it to get it to do what you can do with water way easier. Right now that's solid. I'll have to do a little shading in that beak later. Let me come down here. We've got black in the feathers. It's more solid. I'm focusing right now on the areas that are more of a solid black and don't have a lot of shading. So that's the wing in the back. <laughs> the dragon, I don't, you probably can't see him back there. No, you can't. Dragon moved down lower. He's looking at the dogs. He's watching them. 
Okay, I need a liner brush. Do I have a liner brush? Probably not. I think I sacrificed the liner brush that was up here. Oh, this one will work. To my oil pastels, which means it's forever for oil pastels now. Yeah, and the debate about the binders and all that, that's people have argued about that. I don't know if it's because if you make a YouTube video, people just assume you know what you're talking about, I guess. I don't know. But I've seen people argue that, except there's no science, no fact, no examples behind it. Where like the paint could crack. That's not why it cracked. The paint could chip off. If the paint is chipping off, it's not because water was used. Like those don't have anything to do with why things went badly. So um, Goldens actually did a test where now on this wing, I'm gonna leave some of the white showing through on these lines. But Goldens themselves did actual tests using you know real science, not honeycomb structure. Um, and yeah, you could use like 95% water before it causes any issues. And really, yeah, you could even use more. Once it's varnished, it's not coming off. And I wouldn't even bring it up so often. It's just that I inevitably get people asking, well, I heard, and I understand why they're asking because that's stupid video. Good job, YouTube, on making sure that that one ranks at the top. I feel like if you turn comments off of a video, it shouldn't be allowed to rank. I'm gonna fill that in a little bit more solid. I'll probably come back through with some grays in between. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is dry that. I'm gonna glaze black over all of it and then define it with gray on top. For just a moment and I'm gonna do a medium gray first for around the face so let's go ahead and mix that in I'm gonna pull a teeny bit of red oxide in there so it'll warm up a bit mix some of that in there let's get a little bit more black a little bit more white it's got more color than I really want too much red oxide Now, why am I going that dark on an area that needs to be white? I want to put white on top of this, but if this isn't dark enough, that white's not going to show up. So I'm just going to fill in the little area here. And then this area starts getting more of the red oxides. Let's actually just fill some of that in now. I'm trying to decide, do I want to do white on top of the red oxide or do I want to do red oxide or white and then red oxide on top of that? So many different ways that you can get to a very similar end. I think I'm going to go with a mid range and then go light and dark over it. So let's get a tack one. Bristled Filbert. And I'm gonna pull a little bit of this in here, just kind of mapping out where it goes. We'll be putting lots of detail over that. Just a little bit more water despite what stupid videos say. And now I need to shift over to more of a grayish tone again. So I'm just mixing my black and white. And if I don't go dark enough, my white is not going to show up when I do the liner brush. Oddly, I'm most excited about painting the branch. It's got some um, 
green growth on it that's just really cool looking. Just gonna let all that smudge together. the darker color in here with the gray. And then I wanted to glaze over that black. Did he dry? Yep. So just a little bit of black. I do not want white in this. I just don't want that to be so harsh there. There we go. Nice and toned down. Okay, let's get a base for the leg while I'm at it, just so that there's some color there, so I'm, gonna, I'm ready for detail. This is dry. Actually, I'm gonna go more red oxide and black so I get a more brown tone. I normally do not buy brown paint. It gets goopy really fast with the Liquitex Basics, and I don't know if other ones do, but that one does, so I just mix my red oxide and brown. I mean, red oxide and black to make my brown. I should use the right words so you guys understand what the heck I'm saying. And then feathers will go over that. I know that looks weird right now. Oh, we have, that's actually good timing. Let me let this dry. Oh, we've got two. So we're gonna make, I'm gonna make them do it in two times. So, cause this needs to dry a bit anyway. So we've got the first one, we've got a super chat from Kelsey Lloyd who said, for the puppers. Look at, they know, look at him. How cute is a bad cow licking his lips? Ah, 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 down. <laughs> He's like, dang it, it was so close. Okay, come get your super chat. Yeah, cheater there. You can't just get up because you know what's happening. So you knew what I wanted then, you just don't know what I want when I try to get you to bark. Let's go, boys. Okay, go lay down because you're actually going to get another one. Yep, go lay down. We have to do the rules. Lay down. If I give two in a row, you start standing here like this, expecting a second one immediately. Lay down, lay down, down. Boys, down. Good boys. They're like, man, but we know we're just gonna come right back. Lay down. You have to wait anyway, because that canvas is still too warm. You wanna make sure that your canvas is cooled off before you start painting when you've used the hairdryer, because if it's warm, your paint's drying too fast, so it's hard to get soup. I can't talk, smooth blending. So we have now from Aline, whoops, who said this is for the sweet boys, but also for the pretty pink toed ballerina wherever she is, whenever she is fed. Yeah, my uh, tarantula shed this week, I thought she died when I saw the shed. I was super excited that it was just, she shed or molted. So anyway, that's who Aline is talking about. My tarantula has pink ballet slippers. She's gorgeous. Anyway, moving on. So we've got a, another super chat for the boys. They're like, no, you're not going to give. You don't want another super chat? Okay, come on. I said the super chat word. You can get up when I say the word, huh? Say thank you, Aline. These good treats, huh? Oh, those are very tasty. That's it. All gone. Go lay down. Down. Cow. Do not give those out. eyes. Cow eyes won't. No, no cow eyes. Go lay down. Lay down. Lay it down. Cow. Go on. Go lay down. Oh my God. Wow. Are you seriously just not going to do what you're told? Go lay down. Baddest of bad cows. Now you know how he earned his name. He's like, no, I just do what I want. Okay. Yeah, Fly Me to the Moon says my brown's turned yucky, bumps in it. Yeah, it gets really like clumpy. Now you can thin it out with water and smooth it out enough that it's still usable until it gets really dry, but it always dries in the bottle. But only the, the browns, and I think there was one other color I saw that happen with. 
Is it like yellow ochre or yellow oxide? I forget. But yeah, so there we go. So let's go ahead and we can start on details now. So I'm going to start with the white, and I think I'm going to use my liner brush for the details around the face so that I have more control. Now, I will switch when I get into the chest to a rake brush, but that, those are longer brush strokes here, so tiny. I'm going to have a lot more control. What in the world just came up on my ashes of Soma meteor? No, um, hard pass. Let's go back to something else, Anne Berlin. Let's go... Like, hold on one second, I have to find Amberlynn albums. We'll go with that one. I listened to this earlier. We'll listen to it again. Okay. So on to the details around the face. I want to pay attention. Oh, this is going to be, oh, I don't need this anymore. That will help with the moving. Now we've got a lot of the little details watch the direction that these feathers ah it's already dried watch the direction that these little feathers go so here and you've got this sort of row going around the bottom of the eye and we've got little teeny guys right in here really small I'm going to reload the brush. And just super little. And see how this kind of works in rows. It's not just individual little confetti lines. That is not going to look natural. Clumps and clusters. I'm going to reload that brush again. And this paint has to be thinned with a decent amount of water. If you don't have enough water in there, you are not going to get tiny details. You want to put a little going over the beak. It looks like he got his face a little bit wet with the snow there. Some of those feathers are clumped together right in here like really clumped together. Okay, and we have, I need to put out on the palette a bit of yellow. This one is bronze yellow, that'll work. I wanna thin that out, or not thin it out. Oops, I touched it in black, let's reload. Want some white in there. Get a bit more. And I'm just gonna twist the brush to load it. I don't want, like if there's a chunk of paint on the brush, that is not going to give you good results. That is going to give you a big chunk of, of paint. I want to thin that out with water and twist that into the brush. And he's got just a little bit of yellow right here. And that is it for that one. I'll use that yellow when I get into the branch, but for the painting, that is all he needs. And then we've got some darker shadows, the deeper, almost black, I'm just going to go with black, in a few spots here. Oops, too much water. Not everywhere, just a couple of little spots. I'm also going to darken up the eye a bit more. And I'll put a shine over that in just a moment. We've got some little hairs. Remember when you're using, a whether it's a liner brush or anything else, the harder you push, the thicker that brush stroke is going to be. When you want those teeny little wisps, you barely want to apply pressure. Now I'm going to use a bit of a gray, so I can just pull that up from, whoops, you can't see this because that camera's not on, but I'm just going to put a little bit here. Oops, that's going to be too much. I'm just going to shade that up a bit. You can take a clean, slightly damp brush and use that to smudge out. Just want the hint. That works. And then we've got a little bit more with the black on the tip of this feather. Tiny little details in there. 
see. We're going to get into some of the grayish, that light gray that comes into this area. So I'm mixing just the white and the black to get my gray. I don't want to go straight to white there though. That should be a little bit darker being that it is mixed in with the black. I think it's good. Oh no, that works. And this also works in little rows. And get a little bit longer as they move away from the face. use this to get a little bit of the shine on the eye and then I'm going to go with just straight white for the brightest highlight where I want that to be so that's going to be a bit more than what I have on the reference photo and this reference photo you the link if you want to download it so you can hang along with me I should have mentioned that earlier is in the video description okay so this is all really done up there let's move down to let's move to his chest so as I get into that, I can start using my rake brushes. Now what a rake brush is, if it looks like this, so this one just looks like a normal filbert, but you can kind of see the brushes frayed there. A normal filbert would be like this, a rake brush is like this. So with one brush stroke, you get a bunch of little brush strokes. So it just speeds things along. And I've got a few different sizes over here. I'm gonna use this low Cornell one. I'm gonna start with just white, and I have to thin this down with water just like I would my liner brush, because this is, think of it as a whole bunch of little liner brushes connected. So you're going to be using it the same. Now, you wanna use a really light hand. If you push very hard, it will give you a brush stroke that looks like a normal filbert, not the little individual lines. But then again, if it's too wet, you, oh, that's gray. I have to reload that. I didn't realize there was that much gray in there. Um, if it's too wet, too much water, then it's too translucent. That doesn't work real well. You've got to find a nice balance of how much water versus how much paint. And there's no perfect formula. You're just going to have to experiment with it. I may do a brush stroke right now and be like, well, that didn't work. Reload. Oh, I'm in luck. That wasn't terrible. And I'm just looking at my reference photo. Which direction are these feathers moving in? Some of these, where they're more solid, I can push harder so you don't see as much of the fray, frayed look. Oops, see, that's a brush stroke that doesn't even look like a rake brush because it had too much paint, too much water on it. Just have to dab some of that off. A little bit chunky there. Dab a bit more off. Now here, I want to fill in more solid. The feathers are really dense in there. Very, very white. And you've got a line that comes right here and it meets the top of that foot. So let's go a bit more solid right in through there. You see the, the rows now just change direction. You still have rows, they're just not going in the same direction. If you have any art related questions, you can leave those now. I'll be answering those at the end of the live stream. See, that's too thick. I'm gonna wipe that off. I want these, a few of these to layer over the black feathers there. Your feathers don't need to be exact, they just need to be pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna let that set for a bit. While that sets, I'm gonna come over here to the wing. And I'm 
going to pull some gray, thin that with a bit of water. Ugh, that was terrible. Let's wipe some of that off. I'm just going to get that wet. I'm going to take my paper towel. Let's see if I can do that with a smoother hand. Part of the problem is it's way too light, so I'll have to go back over it with black in between. And this will also soften it out by going over it with some black. So we've got darker here. I want to make sure that back feather is really well defined, really dark. And then we have a corner here. There we go, breaking that up. So we want the hint of those little lines. We just don't want it too over the top. And then we've got more gray as we, oops, that doesn't have enough gray in it, or black in it. just too wet. That needs to dry before I do much more there. Let's get the tail in while I wait for that to dry. I mean, I could just use a hair dryer or I can work on another area that needs work anyway. It's a little bit frayed at the tip. And I'm just looking at that reference photo. Where are my lights and darks? I'll come in between with some of the lights. Now I'm going to be careful. I'm using my fingers at the bottom here. I keep checking my fingers to make sure I do not have paint on them. I don't want fingerprints here. I don't really need my hand there at all. So I'd be better off just removing that. Okay, I'm going to dry this. Actually, I take it back. I'm going to jump ahead and do a little bit of shading on the feet so I can dry it all at the same time. Oops, too much water. Let's reload that. This little chicken wrist. Some of this will get covered when I paint the branch. I'm not going to go too crazy putting detail in just yet. But at least it gets me the start of shading. Chicken rest again. Okay, let's get some... Oh, actually, I'll dry it first. Oops. Okay, I need some white paint. That feather. That 
is just not smooth enough. Let's take this brush and I'm just gonna push that line back a little bit. I don't need to erase it, I just need to push it back. There we go. There's too much water on it, so it's too thick. That's much better. And then this area needs to be a lot darker. A lot darker. Still too light. We've got different feathers there. There's three I'm going to give you the hint of. Again, if you're resting your hand, like right now, I just felt my hand touch that. If there was paint on the side of it, I just would have left a smudge. Got to be careful with these white uh, backgrounds. Now let's get some of the darker reds in there. Right now we've got all these nice pastels. We are going to, I'm just going to use the rake brush again, and I'm going to go with red oxide. Mix a teeny bit of black so that it's not so high I'm here. I'm just going to tone that down a bit. I'm actually going to mix a bit of white in with it too. So I'll gray it up a bit. So I'm thinning that with the water. Let's get my foot stuck under my easel. That would have ended poorly. That's going to be too thick. We're just going to get the hint of some of these darker colors in here. Do I have this on repeat? What is happening right now? I swear I just heard the song or I just listened to Amberlynn so often. No, I guess not. I don't think you're on repeat. Well, I guess I'll find out if that song hits again. I'm just going to skip it. This isn't my favorite. This one's my favorite. Catch your wondering? Look at Pray Tell by Amberlin. Love this song. See how I'm just getting the hint of these colors, just making them a little bit more bold. So now I've got these three values. I've got my darkest darks. Let's see if you can see it a little bit better. There. I've got that mid-tone, the darkest that I'm doing right now, and then that lighter version when I put the white on top. And I'm not going everywhere with this. Just a few spots that are going to make the, the feathers look a little bit deeper in there. Same thing. We'll pull a little bit up here. You can pull a little of this up here, not too, don't go crazy in the face. A little on the wing there. I'm even going to put a little bit of this color over the black. Too much there. Okay, I want more gray though. This brush on its side is giving me a nice line there. I will always go over these areas so many times when I'm doing wings like this when it's so thin. I'm holding it sideways so it gives me really thin lines. I'm going to pull some of that just around the toes. Just a few. I'm still using that rake brush. A um, little bit of detailing there on the feet. Which are going to look weird until I get the branch in there. Oh, that paint ran. That was too much water and that ran where I put the white. So let's just, actually I should use black. We almost get to start the branch. The part I'm looking forward to most. I don't know why. Let's just get that dark. Let's just forget it. Just paint it black and then I can put the white on top. Make my life easier. And that can dry because we have, actually, I'm just going to just fill it in. And put white over it. Okay. And while I wait for that to dry, well, I'll partially dry it. We have a gift from Oreo Beagles. They don't even know. Do you boys want a super chat? 
Yes, yes we do. I even tried, oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, very gentle. That was good, bad cow. I even tried with teaching Wade to speak using the word super chat because they know that one. Like, can I get him excited enough to help? Nope, nothing. Okay, go lay down, lay down. Apparently only dinner and breakfast are what make him excited enough to bark. Go lay down. Boys, get, 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 get. Beggars. They're like, we'll just stand here and give you sad looks and you'll give us, Gibson, lay down. Gibson. But I have a cute, sad face. I do what I want. Okay. Now I need white over that tail and I'm going to take the time, because I'm doing pretty good time-wise, to make it look good. And I'm holding this brush sideways to get the thinner line. But what happened last time, there was a bit too much water in it and it started to kind of spread and run. It didn't look very cute. I didn't even notice it until I was further along. Okay. I'm gonna lip, actually, I should reload that. That's gonna be dry. Oh, I love how this guy's coming out. So I think I'm gonna redo a bunch of paintings in my room to be black and white, because I have dark, uh, like a dark teal wall. Teal, no one's surprised. Um, but I want all black and white with a hint of pink or peach. I actually think this, if he doesn't sell, I'm thinking he's gonna look good in my room. He, his colors are close enough to black and white, I think it would work. Little details there on his legs, some little highlights. Okay. Let's start on the branch, and if I need to come back and do anything else, I can. Uh, let's see. What color do I want to start? I want to go with a medium brown. So I will use my red oxide. I'm gonna pull a bunch of white in there, some black. Let's get some of that yellow, bronze yellow. And I'm gonna need a lot more white, so I'm actually just gonna take a chunk of that and mix it over here. Mm, too tan, pull more of this. I want a mid-range tone. maybe work. I just need a base of something and then I can put all my colors over it. Yeah, that's perfect. By perfect, I mean it'll work. Nothing's perfect. I'm gonna put so many colors over it, it doesn't even matter which color I go with right now. Switch to a round or a liner brush if you need to around the bird's legs and toes. I don't want this perfectly straight. You'll notice from the reference photo, I took out all the little branches going all over the place. I felt like they kind of distracted from, I took away from the bird instead of adding to the piece overall. One of the things that I'm gonna do, both ends of the stick, I'm going to fade out. I'm gonna add a bit of white and let it just, the color not be super bold. so that they don't draw a ton of attention off the canvas. So I'll just take some white, 
soften that up. And I can leave it chunky. That just gives me that hint of bark and such. All the mess I'm going to be doing to these branches. Okay. I'll probably still add more white once that dries. So what happens right now, see how even with me lightening that, it's just dark and it's pulling, I've got my attention pulling in three directions, off here, off here, and off here in a way I don't like. I'm going to lighten all of those areas. I'm just going to throw white over it. Pretty easy. Just soften that right up. So that it just fit you. I want you to see that the branch is there and that the tail is there. I just don't want it so high. Look at me. Pull attention. To, you know, it pulls your attention right off that canvas. And I'm going to give the hint. Now, I'm not copying that reference photo, obviously, exactly. I'm just kind of giving you the hint of where stuff is. Now let's get some darker browns. And so for the darker browns, that is just my red oxide and black. I'm not going to be adding white to that where I want it, just brown. Too much black. Let's get a little bit more red oxide. And I'm going to let my brush stroke show just so I get that hint of bark. I want variation in here. And see how when I leave, add brush strokes, I'm slightly curving it with the branch. And this helps the branch to look more three-dimensional. So just little, almost half, well, not full half circles, even smaller than that, or less uh, of a curve. I'm not going crazy as I let just let that fade off. Focusing more of the dark areas in here closer to the bird. want to get a little bit of green in there. Did I not bring green? I have the light green. I did not get a darker green. One second. Um, apparently not over here. have so much light green. What I need is hooker's green. I got phthalo green. I guess I could use that. Just mix it with the yellow. Oh, here we go. Hooker's green. There's what I want. So we're going to add a bit of green there. 
Now this is going to look really flat for the base layer of green. Don't let that like discourage you. Where's the camera? Here's the camera. Um, don't let that discourage you. You're going to add layers on top. This is everything when you're doing painting like this is a layering process. You're going to, I'm going to add some of my yellow in there. You're going to have some very unfortunate looking layers. Let's throw some black in there too. I just want it dark. Lichen, licken, what is that? Lichen, how do you say that? Somebody's going to know better than me. Whatever, it's really pretty. I think that's what this is. Again, that reference photo is linked in the video description if you want to look at that or follow along. And it's over on my Patreon, but it's free for everybody. Like that's downloadable. You don't have to be a member to get it. I mean, you should be a member. You get a lot of lessons. Speaking of, shameless plug time. How was that for a lead? It was an accidental lead up too. If you want more of my art lessons for as little as $6 a month, you get access to all four. There's over 400 now in multiple mediums, acrylic, uh, colored pencil, charcoal, graphite, oil pastel is a new one now. I've got two of those up. Um, I just had a new one go up yes, yesterday. Um, tons of mediums, ink tents, watercolor, like lots of stuff over there. So for seriously, $6 a month, you get access to all of those. Um, and then you can get, depending on the rewards you want, you can go up on tiers. We, I give mini prints for some of them, group challenges. Uh, for that $6 a month, you also get our monthly, or every month I give a new daily sketchbook prompt to keep you motivated, to keep drawing, even like five minute little sketch, but I've got prompts for that. Get your creativity going. But definitely go check that out. Now I'm gonna go with a lighter version. So I'm still using the grain. I've got a little bit of my yellow bronze in there. And you don't have to use any of the same colors I'm using, just green and yellow, I don't know. Don't worry, worry about your values. Are your darks dark enough, your lights light up? That's what's gonna make your work look more realistic. Having the perfect color makes no difference. That's just a cartoon. Perfect colors are what cartoons worry about. For artists who are working in realism, values are what we worry about. You don't have red oxide? Use something similar. Mix some red and, and yellow and black with it and see what you come up with. It doesn't matter as long as your values, dark's dark enough, light's light enough. That's what's gonna make your work look good. Now I'm gonna just kind of dab in here, get some texture. And then when I say dab, I don't mean stab. We're not stabbing at the canvas. They're actual just teeny tiny brush strokes. You can use a, a small round if that's more comfortable for you. Throwing that on top. Just a hint. You could even do this by dabbing white, different shades of white and gray to get snow if you want snow on your branch. I get just that, oh, I like that. Just that little bit of green in there. What else do I wanna do on him? He's about done. But I've got a lot of time, so let's get some more detail. Since we're here, let's throw some more detail in this guy. So I want to come back through with some white and refine some of these feathers a little bit more. I'm just going to mix some water in with that white. I'm going to do this with the liner brush. Whenever I use the rake brush, when I'm really working like a big project, not a, a quicker live stream project, I'm going to always go back through with my liner brush and refine some of those individual details. That's the trick to making a, a rake brush look real, realistic is you don't depend just on the rake brush for creating those fur or feathers or grass. You use it for your base, but then you come through and add your individual strands with a liner brush. And that's going to break it up and give you a much more natural look. So I can get these individual little hairs or feathers in this case. Again, this guy is still available if you are in the US and you want to bid on him if my website works, which half the time it doesn't. And don't forget, if you want a chance, if you missed that announcement earlier, email me a photo of your only dogs for this one. I need to do a tutorial for in colored pencils, like a big, a long lesson. Um, in colored pencil of a dog, any breed, it cannot be a photograph that you that has been taken by a professional photographer. You need to have taken it so that you can give me the rights to use that photo in my art and for the video and for the lesson. And I will be sharing that photo, whatever photo you provide me with, keep this in mind. I will be sharing it with all of the Patreon members who wanted to paint it too, so people can follow along. So if you send it to me, understand you're giving me permission to make a lesson out of it and share that photo. But 
I will send you the finished artwork. So that's what the giveaway is going to be. If you want a chance to win that, email me your best high resolution photo, best photo of your dog, Lisa at LawCree.com. I'm going to be sorting through any of the photos that I think are usable because you know you have to have a certain angle, certain lighting. We want the best photos there. And from that, then I'll use a random, from the usable set that you guys send me, I will use random number generator to choose the winner. Okay, back to the white. See how some of these little individual guys are coming right over those feathers? I'm gonna let some floof up over the branch. Oh, I had a side story here for those of you who have pets. This may interest you. I have pet insurance for Gibson. I've used Healthy Paws. I've been with them since I had them for years. Wade's on a different health insurance thing through Matt's work. But anyway, we decided to put them both on Matt's insurance because Healthy Paws is... Um, their prices went from like 60 something dollars a month to not like 95. I'm like, I can't afford that. So we went through Matt's work, which was cheaper. So whatever, we moved them over. I've been trying to cancel since November 2nd, November 3rd. I've been trying to cancel with them. And the only way you can cancel is to fax or email. They won't respond to me. I've emailed them multiple times. They are not responding to me. Um, I've even tagged them on Twitter. They're not responding. I had to call my bank and cancel my ATM card because that's where the charge comes out and have them reverse the last month because they're still charging me. Even though I've been trying to cancel, they will not cancel me. They're not even responding to me. It's probably going to their spam folder, my emails, which I get, but that shouldn't be your system. Like, why can't I just cancel through my account? They won't let you do it. They want to talk you into, well, maybe we can do a cheaper plan for you, you know, with less coverage. No, just cancel. This isn't a friggin' gym. So yeah, that company, that's, I just got a notification that an Amazon payment, because I haven't all, anything, my automatic delivery stuff, it's still on my old card. I don't have my new one yet. So I keep getting like Amazon going, oh, your automatic delivery of dog food because the mix in dog food vegetable stuff I use just got declined because I don't have, I had to cancel that card and I'm waiting for the new one to come in. No one cares about that personal story other than Healthy Paws is a BS crap customer service company. And when Gibson had a 600, almost $600 emergency vet bill a few back at the end of November, they only covered $59 of that. It's not even worth it. Especially with homeowners insurance going up three times what it was. I'm just doing some little individual wisps. And look how much more the red just stands out. Um, let me show you in this one because it's more obvious. Look at the detailing in there. Whoops, out of focus. How much more that stands out by just these few extra little wisps. I really like how this guy's coming out. I'm gonna pull some white in here. I wanna break that up. That's a little bit chunky, like two. And then the bark, that's much better. Oh, that's way better. Wow, I'm gonna go a little bit more. I love it. That just made me super happy. I gave myself goosebumps because I like it so much better and I'm a dork. Oh, what band did you just change to? Rise against? No. Let's go to which next? Uh, hold on one second and we'll get back to work. I'm just going through. Next, Amberlynn. Let's go with Lowborn. That album is next. Okay. I'm really liking having been ahead enough that I can take the time to do some of these little details that I normally don't have a ton of time for. Did you not hit play? 
Why are you not playing? Play. Oh yeah, it does help if you push play. Funny that. Oh, somebody got a, we've got a bid for you. So this little guy's gonna get a home and we have a first photo. Oh, it's a good one. It's definitely one that's going in the, the batch that is a possible entry. I can't wait to see. Maybe I'm just doing this giveaway so I can see all your puppies. It's possible. It's me being greedy. I want to see puppy photos. Not puppies. They can be adult dogs too, but you, you know what I mean. Okay, just a few little details. What I normally recommend, when you think you're finished, take a break, go on a walk, come back with fresh eyes, flip it upside down. Does something stand out that you don't want to? Like in my case, definitely my attention was being pulled off the edge. Ooh, this is standing out. I don't love that. Let's just let the tail fade out a little bit. And now by doing that, my attention is not being pulled straight off here. I'm being pulled into this area. This is where I want my attention to flow. Also, I don't like this. I just noticed the way that white is, which is just kind of how it is on the photo, but I don't like how it looks. So this is where I take art artistic liberties and fix it, straighten that out. I'm gonna come back through with some dark too. We should have a hint. Let's get some darker colors in here. We're gonna pull a little bit more detailing around where the white feathers are. It's gonna balance it out better. Much better. And then I'll put the white back over it to make it stand out better. And let's see. And so even though a lot of what I'm doing, I'm just going over areas I already had done, but now I, I'm just correcting them, fixing them up, making them look nicer, especially now that I know somebody bid on him and he's actually going to get shipped. Also, speaking of shipping things, if you are waiting for your Patreon postcards, the October cards that should have gone out in November, I, they're going out tomorrow morning. I finally got my stamps for those. So those are on the way. I've got to get, I'll be working this weekend on the December ones that should have gone out no, the November that should have gone out in December, I'm working on this weekend, so those will be coming. And I shorted myself on some stamps for those, so I've got to order some more. But then I've got to, I've got to order all new set for January, so I'm excited because I've got some new prints that are going to be available for the mini print section. And yes, that's going to be fun. And then I forget who won the mouse from a couple weeks ago in Pam Pastels and Colored Pencil. That's going out tomorrow or Friday. So if you're waiting for me to ship stuff, it's coming. I'm trying to get caught up on all the things like that's a little too thick. So I'm going to go on top of that with black when it dries. I love the softness of this one. getting good edges with that'll work so I'm using a small uh, tacklon bristle brush but it's really small and the bristles are in really good condition so they work great for getting straight lines Darken this just a bit. That's better. Oh, let's fix that before that dries. Having to be careful with the white. I'm just going to take a clean brush, grab a paper towel, have that ready to go. I just have to get that off before it dries and we're good. Because what's under is completely dry. That totally fixes it. And I have a little dot from earlier. Go. 
Okay, and then for signing it, I just need to decide where I want to sign it. So the way that I decide what would look good, I'll hold my brush. Do I want it in this bottom? Oops, let's get this over. Do I want it in this bottom corner? Like I'm looking at the weight. Wherever you put your signature, depending on especially how dark that is or how bold it is, it's gonna pull, it adds weight to that area. So if I have my signature here, that makes this corner of the painting heavier. So you think of it as like tipping because it's heavy from that. So what I'm doing is here, here, no. I'm gonna do it right along the branch here. So it just kind of flows in with this. I don't like the weight that it adds on either of these corners. I feel like it pulls it in one of those corners, especially given that I was trying to keep the edges so light so that everything flowed into the bird. We're going to do it up there and I'm just going to use, I'm gonna use gray. So black and white. I want you to see my signature, but I don't want it to be like, look at me instead of the bird. I want the subject to be the main focus. So just thinning that with water. Oh, this is the first time I'm signing 2024. And then if that were too bold, I could go over it with white, but that looks fine. That's a much better way. I actually may. Hold on, I'm gonna dry that. I'm gonna lighten it a little bit more. I'm just gonna lighten a little bit with the white. Just oh yeah, that's much better. It's not a lot, it's very subtle, but it's, again, I don't want this to be so, look at me. I want it there, I want you to see it. I don't like when, like I've known of artists that will hide their signature on the back of the canvas. No, don't do that, it needs to be on the front. It's worthless, like you have to have it on the front. But you don't need it to be like, Bob Ross was known, he always signed like big, red, bold, obnoxious, like in, it, it, to me it just pulled attention away from the, the subject. So this is a better way to go. Here is the finished painting. Make sure not to get any wet fingers on there. There you go, cute little guy, nice and fluffy. I'm really happy with how those feathers came out. I love the branch too, all this entire thing I absolutely love. And then going back to talking about when I varnish this, what I'm going to do, so there's a couple of ways that you can go about varnishing it. One, and I'm not gonna do it now, this needs to dry for at least a day before I varnish it. But what I will do is, if I were to take a brush that has varnish on it and wipe it right across the bird in here, that black may pick up just enough to leave a tiny smudge over here. I don't want a tiny smudge over there. I, w what I'll do is first varnish everywhere with the white, then I will varnish the bird. That first layer, you'll kind of be able to see that they were varnished in two steps, but the next layer will be set enough I can go over everything and it evens it all out because I'm always gonna do varnish in two to three coats. So two to three co light coats is ideal. So that is what I'm going to do to varnish and I use Liquitex high gloss varnish. So that is, there we go, finished. Super happy with how he came out. Now we're going to do, and we, I've got some questions. I'll be answering your questions in just a moment here, but I do want to do that box opening too. And we had from Python, oops, asked, I think that was Python. Let me scroll up. Yeah, it was Python asked, do you have any more you edited YouTube content coming soon? So fun story about that. I have a, um, oops, wrong camera. I have, I've been working with a YouTube coach and I'm going to be, He's been helping me on the, the Bearded Dragon one and doing storytelling is something that you guys will like better because apparently my stuff is really boring. I get like no views. So I'm working on making the content more interesting and something you'll like more, which means it takes a lot more work, but that is what I'm currently doing, how I built the Bearded Dragon tank. Um, but I also have a digital tablet painting coming soon. I've got oil pastel showing you different uh, techniques and details, the ways that you can get details with oil pastels, which is not something I ever see on, on YouTube. So some different techniques there. So yeah, I've got a lot of, of edited content coming, but it's slow, especially because right now I'm working with the coach. So there's more like, okay, wait until I hear a response from him on what he thinks about certain ideas and stuff. So yes, but. So I have this box just got dropped off today from Amazon and I will be doing a review of these. I haven't opened it, so for all I know, there's not the wrong thing, we'll see. 
We've got some packing material. Oh, you really taped this up good. Ooh. Oh, I didn't bring tape scissors over here. I didn't think I'd need scissors. Let's use my ceramic blade. Let's see if this will cut it. Yay. It's not what this is for, but okay. I'll show you in just a second if this ever gets open. Why is this so difficult? These are actually pretty good sizes. Can you guys tell what it is yet? I don't know how much you've seen from me I'm trying to. And why is this so difficult? Oh my God. The anticipation. Wow, that was wrapped in an interesting way. We have, so the first one I bought separately because it didn't come in the set. This is M. Graham acrylic paints. This one is dioxazine purple. And then I bought the set of, wow, they like went to town on plastic. Like, and it just doesn't seem necessary. How much do we need of waste? Like, I don't, are these prone to leaking? Like, this is ridiculous. Okay. The next one is the also M. Graham, the acrylic paint set. And these are the two, ounce, two fluid ounces. One of you guys gave me a big, huge super chat. I wrote down the name and I don't have it in front of me right now for, um, for these, wanting me to review them. So that is what these are from. So we've got in this set, I still think, honestly, I'm gonna stick with my, my Liquitex Basics. I mean, I've not even tried these. It's just that Liquitex Basics work so well for my technique. So it'll be interesting with me going into it with that attitude if I change my mind or not. But we've got, I've got uh, Azo Yellow. It has Naphthol Red, Ultramarine Blue. And you may be thinking, well, you could have just mixed purple. You never mix dioxazine purple quite right. Like I just, no. Uh, Phalo Green, Mars Black, and Titanium White. And the Titanium White actually came free in this set. If you bought the set, you got one free tube. So that seemed like a pretty good deal um, as far as getting started on that. And I don't remember what I paid for these. Um, you can, there, I got them on Amazon, so you can look them up there. It actually ended up being cheaper than Blick. So that was exciting, but yes, I will have a review and that will be a fully edited video, a review of those. Oh good, we've got some more puppy pictures coming in. I haven't looked at them yet. Okay, let me get a drink of tea. Black Sage, it's, no, not Stash, who is the company? It's Black Sage Decaf Iced Tea I've made, it's so good. It doesn't even need sugar or anything. It's just good by itself. Okay, so questions. Where is Discord? Um, I'm guessing those will come in in just a moment, so I'll scroll up and get some now. I'll start from the bottom since they usually come in from the top. I'll work my way backwards. Um, let's see, Fly Me to the Moon said, I just started using Gambar. Do you put more than one coat with it? Follow the directions. I wanna say I do two coats, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I always have to look at the bottle because I use so many supplies. I always give myself a quick re refresher. The Liquitex var gloss varnish is the only one I remember off the top of my head because I use it so often. I don't, I wanna say I do two. Maybe I don't. I don't know, follow the directions on the bottle. Um, Brittany said, do your Patreon videos have at least closed captioning on them? Well, it's through YouTube and YouTube does their automatic closed caption if you want that. So it may or may not be super accurate, but you can turn it on through YouTube. Um, so that would be, but nothing like I'm not sitting there and putting my own, like making sure it's accurate on a two hour video, like there'd be no way. I would not get any other work done. She said, I'm asking for people with hearing loss and or have been diagnosed with auditory process disorder like me. I mean, it, it's a YouTube, it's uploaded to YouTube, it just left as unlisted. So you should be able to turn on YouTube's version and they're getting pretty accurate on that. And especially with those, so like the edited stuff that I do, I'm talking a lot faster. But on the, the lessons on Patreon, it's not as much, like I've got so much time to share the information that it goes a bit slower. So the YouTube um, should get it a bit more accurate. 
Uh, Pi uh, I've got that one. Therapy art for you said, I will take a picture of my work and walk away and look at the picture. Amazing the things I see from a photo. Oh, totally. Because it's the same as looking at it from a distance. Um, Angela said, how would you mount or frame something like this, the chickadee you just painted? So this one's actually a long tail tit, but the way that I, I shouldn't say that on YouTube. Um, you're going to use an open frame. Where is, hold on, what is the text? Okay, Nick has questions up. I'm not getting notifications for some reason. Um, it's an open frame and, or, I don't have one over here, do I? I used to keep one over here and I don't know what happened to it. This is what happens when I clean, I lose everything. Let me see if there's one back here. No, just get a normal, so this is an eight by 10. So you would just get an eight by 10 frame, pop the glass out, and pop this in, done. Like super, super easy. You don't want it behind glass. So a normal, like basic, you can get it at like Walmart or probably in Target costs too much for that sort of thing. But um, pop the glass out and stick this in and then the, fold the little tabs over it, ready to hang on the wall, just like that. Or you could set it, you could, like how I have it on the easel, you can just kind of set it on a shelf. Like if you've got a floating shelf, that looks neat where it's just setting on it. The other option is to buy an actual open frame intended for paintings and then you would, insert them into that. Okay, let's see. Oh, we have, is that one new? I think that just came through. Another from Oreo Beagle, before I go through the questions. Do you guys want a super chat? Were you licking your lips before you even got up, Gibson? I think I saw your tongue come out. That was kind of cute. Okay, you know what I was thinking of this week? Good boys. I, how they must view, when I'm doing the, the live streams, like to them, they don't know I'm talking to you guys. They're probably like, why is mom just sitting in here randomly talking and occasionally gives us treats for no apparent reason. I was thinking how funny that would seem to them, like how weird it is. That's all, go lay down, go on, go lay down, lay down, good boys. But yeah, they must think I'm an absolute, well, they're used to me talking to myself, but, live stream nights seem extra funny like just ra they don't know why i decide to give them a treat when i do lay down gibson gibson down slowest race dog oh we're gonna stretch come on all the way down good boy okay so questions are in but for some reason there we go i don't know why i'm not getting notifications um, Snow said, I have a question. Since we sometimes use acrylic paints and then oil paints after, can you keep the paints in the Masterson's palette box or do you have to scrape off the acrylic and put them in a bottle for reuse and clean them off your palette to put oil? Oh, I don't share a palette, get a new one. Do not share because that is going, you're gonna have some oil residue there. You don't want that mixing in with your acrylics. You're going to, you would put, you're setting yourself up for the potential of having all sorts of issues separate palette for your oils and acrylics. There is no sharing going on here. Same with your paintbrushes. We do not share paintbrushes. We do not share palettes when it comes to oils and acrylics. There's just too much possibility for cross-contamination that will ruin your acrylic supplies. Um, let's see, uh, that was a good question though. Uh, DJ said, did you get a haircut? I did. Um, I always think I want to let it grow out. And then I remember, I don't like how my face looks when my hair is longer. Like it droops everything down and it just ages me worse than before. So yeah, that I'm really excited and it is way easier to wash and dry now. My hair is weirdly like really, really thick. No one likes cutting my hair. So yeah, it is, God, life is easier. Um, let's see. Deborah said, I'd like to see your sweatshirt because I would like a teal colored one. This is not one of my, my sweatshirts. This is, I need to make some more sweatshirts for us. This is actually an old Aquashella sweatshirt from a few years back. That's like way oversized because it's the only size they had. But I love oversized, love oversized sweatshirts because it's like a dress. So yeah. Um, but it just has an Aquashella monster on it. Uh, let's see. But I do need to get some more. That's one of, one of, I have a few goal, I have a, a lot of things I plan to get. Is that a spider with like random cobweb on my roof? I gotta take care of that. But I'm um, sorry, no one cares. Um, I do plan to get more merch done, more stickers, more, like I have lots of plans for lots of stuff coming up. Uh, Stephanie said, I don't have a lot of experience with oil painting. What do you use for a palette? Do you cover it to keep it wet between sessions? So I do the same thing that you guys see here. It's a Masterson's palette. 
you can see the edge. It's kind of like a big Tupperware and it has a blue lid that sits on the top. And this is a new wave glass palette. Let's see if I can pop that out without cutting myself. These ones are pretty safe, but well, I can't get it out. There's a, it's a glass palette that fits inside perfectly. So all I have to do to clean it is take my razor blade. Um, let's grab one of them over here. Nope, that's the oil painting one. I have a different one for acrylics. I just take one of these glass scrapers and it just scrapes everything clean and they do the same thing for my oils. So I have one for oils and one for acrylics. And the, when you put the lid on it, it does keep it wet. Anywhere where you have put your mixing medium, I usually, I, well, not usually, I always put it in the middle, but anywhere where my mixing medium is, that's gonna dry pretty quickly. I have to refresh that every time. But the paint around the edges, as long as mixing medium, my liquid hasn't mixed in with it, because again, fast drying medium, anywhere where the paint is like chunky, that stays wet for a really long time. Anywhere where it's been thinned out with the liquid, that is gonna dry no matter if it's sealed or not. Okay. Python said, uh, uh, how many layers should I do with the Caran d'Ache Luminance? I bought the 100 set and it's coming in a few days. I'm so excited. So there's no way for me to say for sure. For me, I would say I probably do eight to 10 layers. I don't know, but it depends on how much pressure you're adding. What is it that you're, what texture, what look are you trying to get? Did you start burnishing or pushing hard early on? Some people may only put a couple of layers, but they push so hard that there's more pigment on the paper. Of course, that limits how many layers you can get because you flatten the tooth of the paper, you can't get more on top of it. But it, it really depends on how you do it. I usually do, I would say maybe eight to 10 light layers. So I do like three to four layers, two, three, mm, three to four layers, blend it out with OMS, another three to four layers, blend it out with OMS, another three to four layers. So no, probably more than 10. Now that I think about it, I put a lot of layers and then I blend with OMS in between, but I use a really light hand. If you're pushing harder, if you hit the stage where you're like, okay, I'm ready, I'm just going to burnish early on, you may only get six layers. So it, there's, there's no like set rule of how many you're going to do there. Um, Karina said, how long roughly do paints last when not being used? Mine are in storage and I can't stop worrying about them. It depends on a few factors. One's the brand. The color within that brand, like my Liquitex, I have, this one will probably last me forever, brilliant yellow green. This one is old, I don't know when I bought it, but it's perfectly fine. If, there, if you get to where you've used most of it and there's a lot of air in there, it's gonna dry out faster. Certain colors though, like burnt sienna, my browns, like Van Dyke brown, um, I think raw sienna, did, or not raw sienna, raw sienna doesn't do it, um, uh, raw umber. That one does it. They tend to dry and get chunky, like sometimes within a year and sometimes longer, but those col those specific colors, I just don't go through them fast enough. If I do a big painting, I'll buy them. But other than that, I don't go through them that fast. That's why I'll use red oxide because I know that one doesn't tend to chunk up unless I get too much air, you know, it, it's been dried out a bit. But it depends on the brand. And it depends on the medium, like oil paint. Oil paint, I have oil paints that are from when I first started painting, what, 25 years ago with oils, and they're perfectly fine. It's hard to get the cap off sometimes, but I mean, the paints inside are fine. You, it, but it depends on the brand. It, dep it depends on, did a hole get in the container? Sometimes a tiny little hole will get in there and that'll dry everything out. So way too many factors is to say for sure. Also the temperatures, is it out being stored in the heat? Extreme temperatures or extreme cold, that may, may the cold usually won't hurt it bad, but the heat could. So just a few factors. Um, I can't say for sure. Some paints, 25 years, so, and they're still fine. Some paints, six months later, and they're getting chunky. So I don't know how helpful that is. Uh, Lily said, when you put a canvas in a frame, do you use the, the metal clips, and how do you like the wiring uh, positioned on the back? So it depends on what it is. If um, Let me see if I've got one over here that I can bring over. Um, I don't have any framed that I can easily grab, I don't think. No. Nope. Okay, never mind. I can't. I'm trying to think. Do I have any anywhere else? Hold on one second. I'm going to leave. I may lose you guys for a minute. I may have one out here. Um, nope, these aren't framed.
Okay, this is the biggest one, or <clears throat> it is a big one, but it's the fastest one I can find that I actually have displayed. Okay. So let's see if I can do this to where you can see it. So here's the front, and this is an open frame. There is no glass anywhere on this. Let's look at the back. Oh, that was a little dusty. I need to dust that. So these are metal. Jeez, you are seriously dusty. I need you to do a better job of dusting. Um, sorry, I'm kind of neurotic about those things, so I'm going to do it right now in front of you guys. But anyway, so this, these little, can you see the little metal tabs going around? These screw in with a metal screwdriver, or uh, electric screwdriver, into the frame, and then the little tabs. You can see it kind of sticks out a little bit. Lock the canvas into place. And then this has a metal wire. Let's turn this so you can see the metal wire there. The metal wire has a little guy there and the hanging wire over that. So that is giving us, um, that is locked in really well. This is a very large painting, so it needs a little bit more than what I might do on, let's say, a small painting. I can get away with the little teeny skinny tabs. I think you guys have seen that some of the frames come with, especially like this one is small enough. This is so small, those little flimsy metal tabs that come in a cheap frame with like the glass in front of it, you're just gonna take the glass out. Those are totally fine. This is lightweight, it doesn't weigh much of anything. That painting is so large, it weighs a lot more and the chant, like a little flimsy tab, well that needs to be a more open frame anyway. So that's an actual open painting frame. But I wouldn't trust any little flimsy tabs on that. The, the painting just, it's too big, it's too bulky. You want the really screwed in ones. But yeah, these little teeny guys, you can use the little ones that the little bendy tabs are fine. Okay. And you can get those with, um, go to any art supply store and there should be like a framing department and they sell the packs of everything to do that with. Definitely get yourself, and I need to get one, an electric screwdriver will make your life so much easier. I really need to invest in one. Okay. Um, where were we? Okay, Fran James said, if you use a projector, what do you all use? I have a total of about $500 Christmas money and I would like to get one. What are the important things to look at besides keystoning? Uh, thanks. So the one that, I, let me see how much it is on black. The one that I, the only one that I know of that I'm sure would be fine is the one Blick sells. Um, let me see. It's by Artograph. It's a digital, woo, that got more expensive. They have a different one that's now 900. Holy crap, don't buy that. That is ridiculous. Okay, they have one, the Artograph Flare 500 is 449, so that went down in price. Oh wait, no, that's new. Where, I don't know where the old one is. They must not have, yeah, because this one doesn't have any reviews and the old one used to have reviews. They just weren't very good. Oh, they've got different ones now. Hold on, let me see about Jerry's. Um, yeah, they've got the flare also for five, 450. I want to know reviews on those, honestly. They don't, these are brand new and they don't have reviews. I, I'm thinking the flare for 550 is probably good because it's artograph. That's what mine is. Mine was, I want to say I paid like seven or 750 for mine, which was high. But oh my God, I freaking love it. They don't make mine anymore, but this is the same company. Digital, digital pro, projector with 36. So all the stuff like the grids, mine does that. So I have never used any of that for anything. I just use the keystoning for, and the, what that is, why you need that. You have these little buttons um, on, here's my remote for mine. The little buttons, because when you, you position it, it will always be angled weird and you have to use the keystoning to, to even it out so it's flat with wherever your canvas is positioned. But as long as it has that, you're like, it, they should all have that. Um, wireless screen sharing with Bluetooth, that would be convenient. I just use a little um, USB drive for mine, which is sometimes a pain in the butt, but enlarging pictures drawings. I wanna know the reviews on this. Somebody's gotta do, I would buy it and do a review, except 
It's, oh, geez, that is tiny. That fits in someone's hand. That is like little. I'm interested in that. I have a feeling that that would be really good, but I don't see reviews anywhere. What does Amazon have? If I ever get rich, I'll buy one and review it. Um, let's see. I think 800 is just ridiculous. I would not buy that, but, or 900, whatever it was. I'm sure it's great, but dang that. Everything is so, ugh, inflation. So, but these are new. Okay, so the Artograph 1200, the 900 one ha does have reviews. Let's see if we can find the flare with reviews on Amazon or not. Um, there's a flare on here. Kodak, Mini. So a lot of these, oh, I know with my digital projector, it's actually made by LG. It's the same thing, same everything, but the programming in it is different. The hardware is all the same. So that is your main. Okay, so they've got it on Amazon. Let's see what the reviews say. We're just going to look at this right now because I didn't review it. We're going to read some Amazon reviews. That's the Flare 500, and it's a dinky little thing. Can we go down to reviews and see? Long story short, uh, no, that's the Inspire. I need the Flare. Can you just show me the Flare? Oh, I hate when they've got multiple products on reviews. Okay, Flare 450, which one are we looking at? I want the Flare 500. Okay, Flare 500, back down to reviews. 450, they didn't like. Remote control was the wrong one for the manuals. Um, Inspire, Flare 450. Somebody had four stars, did not receive remote control update, company sending remote. So that's one of the things I liked with Artograph. I had a problem initially with my remote and it turned out it was a known problem. This, where it pulls out for the battery, the way that it did, it worked, it didn't, um, didn't work. It didn't, you couldn't pull, it wouldn't, it wasn't possible for the battery to sit in properly. And it turned out it was a known problem. It was just a manufacturing error. They sent me a new one, no problems. So uh, they gave me kind of a fix, a workaround, and it didn't really work. So they just sent me a new one. So I liked the company. Um, they were so, this was probably around 2017. I don't remember when I got that one. It was a while ago. Wonderful, like their customer service was so good. So no complaints there. So the company sent them a remote when they didn't get it. That's good. 450, someone said nice, e nice size, easy to pack. Uh, this one's very happy with it. Uh, as an artist, I find it to be a key tool in my art supplies. Looked at other brands, blah, blah, blah. Projectors, crisp, clean, and bright. Looking forward to using this one for size the plus two. Ah, this person says, don't buy. I bought this device at the beginning of July and struggled with it from day one. The remote is a very cheaply made remote and only worked half the time. That is weird. I would contact the company and I bet they would have replaced it. Uh, the pamphlet that came with the device is only instructions you'll get. There are no videos and I ended up having to call and write several times to get very minimal help. In 30 days, it broke. 550, I almost got screwed. I contacted Artograph and they told me I had to contact Amazon. Well, that makes sense. You bought it through Amazon. That's how it works. Uh, I contacted, if they're going to return it, Amazon and they told me I had to contact the third party seller. Oh, that's not good, which was noteworthy goods who were absolutely no help. Oh, I don't like, I do not like buying tech items on Amazon through third party sellers. Do not do it. They will sell refurbished as brand new and not tell you. So you get a defective product that, well, that's probably, I bet you that's what happened here. She bought a third party, didn't realize it because it's Amazon and ended up 30 days. So that's probably why she had problems. Um, let's see, they were no help. I was told I had to contact Artograph, went back to Amazon and thankfully, so Amazon did get involved and helped. Amazon was just the middleman when Artograph or Noteworthy Goods should have stepped up. Yeah, I understand why this person's complaining, but I bet you that what they were sent was probably refurbished. That's probably why it didn't work. Had to return the product, project, uh, let's see, red light making it impossible to use. Okay, so that one was broken. I, I have to wonder if she bought a refurb too. Don't buy it on Amazon. Well, so the thing is though, when you buy on Amazon, their return, like they will usually take care of their customers, usually. So that is a big bonus, but those are some, like the people who like it, loved it. And then there were a few people like, it just didn't work. And to, I just, the way things are on Amazon and third-party sellers, they sell new as refurbished all the time. So yeah, I'm thinking, I would look more into that Artograph Flare 500 is the one, it's 450. So that's in your budget, you know, taxes after that, but that's probably, if it were me, the one I would lean toward just because I've really liked Art, Artograph. And yeah, 
Um, okay. Let's see. Dolphin Soul said, are there certain angles you want for the dog photo, uh, dog reference photos? Close up, full body, front side. I don't know, good photos, interesting photos. I like three quarter face, but I mean, if your dog has an awesome expression and it's looking at the camera, um, yeah, it just, anything. Um, Emily said, where do you get the dog beds from? Hollywood Feed. So it's a pet store, we have them locally. They're mostly in the South. I, it's sad because I can't get them from my mom in California. But Hollywood Feed, they, they're the Mississippi made beds. They're wonderful. All parts of it unzip and the entire cover, the, even the donut, like the thick poofy part behind, you pull out the padding and it all goes in a washer. So nice. Love those things. And it's like thick canvas type uh, fabric. Um, Sarah said, do you ever use wood panels for acrylics? If so, are there any you can recommend? I like the wood more than canvas and I wanted to try your classes with the wood. I don't, just make sure you do a clear gesso over them. So let's say you wanna leave some of the wood exposed. I, I need to do some because I do like that look too. I know what you're talking about, I like the look. But gesso at first with a clear gesso so that the paint isn't like soaking into the wood grain. That way you still see the wood, but your acrylic is sitting on top where it's supposed to. Um, Fly Me to the Moon said, I read the Magic Bird series, I loved it. Isn't it fun? They just, uh, but the werewolf one with them sucks and there was another one that came out, I'm reading by hand now and I can't even finish it, it's a vampire one. One of the, va the vampire and wizard one, super fun. This one's a vampire and vampire slayer one and it sucks so bad. I swear this author, Cam Shea, I don't know if she's got a 14 year old ghostwriter writing half the, her stuff. Like some of it is so good, so well written, fun characters. They're just fun books. And then some of them are just painful. And I'm like, I just want all the characters to unalive themselves so I don't have to read this book anymore. Like, can we just stop? It's so bad. Like I would never guess it was the same author ever. So yeah, um, her newest one, the Vampire Vampire Slayer one is just, it, the short version of it, I am like 85% into the book and the entire story is, I'm so awkward. I have social, so, um, social awkwardness and I don't know how to talk to people well. That's it, that is the book, that is what it's about. But I'm a super cool fighter, I'm super tough girl, I'm a great cool fighter. And it, that alone could be a personality type, that's fine. That's all she talks about, this is the entire book. Is her in situations talking to her coworkers and being awkward. That is what the book is, the whole, the whole thing. And her coworkers who also are like the cops of the magic world, are um it's like three stooges they're idiots all of them are just like stupid dumb which to me i don't impress i don't like that humor it's just not fun to me it's just childish i'm like a 14 year old ghostwriter had to have written this because there's no way this is written by it's horror I, I don't think i'm gonna finish it i can't it's just i just yeah i need to start something new anyway moving on uh fourth wing though you guys want an audiobook one my friend lena dania some of you guys know her here on youtube she suggested that one to me Oh my gosh, I'm a lot of swearing, so just be warned. And there are some adult scenes that I personally don't like, so I for fast forward through those because I'm an old prude. This is what happens when you get old. But um, I just fast forward through those. The story itself though, loving the whole story. Like, super fun. I'm on the second book now, but anyway, moving on. Um, friend said, thank you for researching. I was getting so confused. They were talking lumens, etc. Yeah, and it comes down to how bright it is, but with Artograph, it should be fine. Wherever you buy for them, um, I would just make sure you can return it. If you turn it on and you're like, wow, it is really dark, I can't see what I'm doing, then maybe if, as long as you can return it. Because they are like a good projector. Do I have mine in? I have mine in here. I might be able, hold on. Did I leave the plug in here? If I did, I'll set mine up real quick and show you guys what a good projector should look like. So if you buy one, I do, I have it, okay. We're gonna have a quick little demonstration of a digital projector and how bright this is, how well it would show up. Um, I'm just gonna hold it so it's gonna not focus well. This isn't the best way to do it, but you would set it on a tripod in front of whatever you're doing. But a good, like your old projector, oh, that isn't it, shoot. I may have to go in my office and grab it because I don't know where the actual, um, I thought I left it in here this time. It's a little USB drive that I get my images off of it when I use a projector to, yeah, I'm gonna have to run in the office. I think it's in there. Um, okay, wait here. Let me go and see if that's in here. Be right back. Thank you. 
thing is Okay, it is in here then, because it is not in there. I thought I left it in here. I remember putting it down going, oh, I need to remember I left this here. Because I normally put it in my office. I may not be able to show you if I can't find this thing. I mean, I have to find it regardless, so we can chat while I look. Um, come on. There's only a couple of places it could possibly be. This is definitely one of them. Um, it's this little white USB stick. And I thought I had seen it over here. Throwing stuff on the floor. Um, usually when I leave it in here, I toss it over here somewhere. So you're supposed to be able to use, I think, Bluetooth or something to connect it. Like if I was using that, that would be easy. I have no idea how to get that to work. A lot of the features this can use, I don't use. I just go with the very basics of USB drive and stick it in there. Although being that I've lost that USB drive, I may not be able to do this demonstration for you. I can always show you on another day when I find it, if I can't find it tonight. Oh, I need to clean this area badly. This needs to be reorganized. I have a random stack of stuff I used to have it in there. I don't think so. I could have fallen on the floor. I'm always knocking stuff down. Hmm. It was definitely not in the office though. So it has to be in here. Hi, dragon. All my little hiding spots of where I put random crap is what I'm looking at right now. Okay, one more spot I'll look and then I'll give up and I'll just, next time I find it next week, I'm sure I'll find it this week. Um, well, I have to find it because I have to use it this week. I will do a demonstration of how it works or how bright, I want you to see how bright it should be. Because the old projectors, when you used them, I hope you can still hear me when I'm over here. When you used them, they used to, um, like you had to have it perfectly black. The room had to be so dark and you would still barely see. With this one, you can have the lights on and you can see just fine. Like I'll turn the lights off, but it's not perfectly dark. I can still use it in the day and it works fine. Why are there dog toys back here, boys? This is not where toys belong. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to give up on this, this search. But it's not anywhere where it should be. So weird. I should have found it by now. Okay, I'm just gonna have to call it quits. It's probably right in front of me and I'm just not seeing it. It's just a little USB. Anyway, I'll do a demonstration for you guys next week. Um, someone remind me. How did I lose that? Like I know where the remote is. How do I know where the remote is? And I don't know where. I don't know. Okay, moving on because it is already 10. Let's get through the last of the questions. And someone remind me to do a demo next week. Nope, not there either. What about over here? Nope. I bet you I knocked it down. It's probably one of the many things that have fallen on the floor. Okay, last questions. Um, Artograph is no longer in business. That seems weird if, I don't know if I believe that because where did you hear that? I mean, they're still, did they sell out to somebody else? Which would be, that would make sense to me if they did that, but that seems odd because I'm still looking for it. Um, they're still selling, like it's not being clearanced. Like it's not, they're still selling all of those. They have new ones that just came out, like a lot of new ones that just came out. 
So did they get bought out by somebody else would be the only thing that would make sense to me. Uh, let's see, we're going to inform you that Artograph is no longer in business. Studio Designs has acquired several products from Artograph and will continue to carry only these products as well as the Artograph brand and all intellectual pro pro uh, property. The items below will continue to be available through Studio Designs. Interesting. So I wonder if Studio Designs, yeah, so I have no idea if, um, so the brand is still there. It's just a different company. So I don't know what their customer service would be like. Interesting. Um, okay. Let's see. So that makes more sense. Um, Dolphin Soul, if you do more of those blocks like the peacock you did, especially underwater theme. Yeah, definitely. I only got the small ones. So nor I prefer canvas, just personal preference. It's not that one is actually better than the other. But yeah, I'd have to actually buy some. Um, Fly Me to the Moon said... Is that the lies of vampire slayers? Uh, say again, which ones are good? Yeah, it's horrible. Um, actually, hold on, I've got it. The lies of vampire slayers. And it's not anything that I think pushes, it actually goes back in time. So it's not even the next in the series. It's back after, it's, I'm thinking which one it comes before. I think this one is right after the Killian Drake and Hazel Medeas story, like they're the wizard one and vampire one. So it's like, it goes way back in time. And yeah, it's, t I am, I'm 85% in, and this is how I'm now reading it. I'm just scrolling through skimming, like, did anything happen? And the, like, you have a little cute little love story that's supposed to be there. It's dumb so far. I don't care about any, I just want it to end, like in her cooking. So that we'll ramble about the book for just a second here. The cooking She's supposed to be this super like amazing fighter. It's really cool, all the stuff she can do, well-trained, all this, but she can't follow a simple recipe. Like she gets cookie dough and she burns that. She can't cook for herself. All she can eat are smoothies because she burns everything. I don't cook. You follow a recipe, you follow a recipe. It may not be good, but it's edible. She can't do any of it. And it's like, so she's completely, like I know they're trying to make her fun and quirky, but it's they took it too far and it's just dumb. It's so painfully dumb, everything about this. The, the nonstop social anxiety, she can't talk to her coworkers and, and oh, here's another conversation where she was awkward and here's another conversation where she's awkward. And that could have been so relatable because I think most of us feel that way. But they, the whole book, that is all, the only thing in this book is that and it just, it's so bad. Okay. Um, wow, dead poetic. I haven't heard them in a while, that just came up. Um, back, sorry, back to questions. Um, sorry, distracted by dead poetic. Um, let's see. Brittany said, in 2019 Studio Designs, oh, you just said the same thing I just read. Artograph will only service those um, from Artograph and will only service those found on the Artograph's website. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, but I mean, I guess they, the main company went out of business, but somebody else acquired them. So that would explain why those products are what they are. So there we, yeah, that's crazy. Um, let's see. Um, what are good image sites to use for paintings? If you want royalty free, you can use Unsplash or Pixabay. If you want to purchase, like get really good stuff, uh, wildlife reference photos is great. If you want marine stuff, while, uh, Michael Vargas photography on Patreon has really good stuff for marine, whether it be coral or fish. So he has some flowers and stuff too, but really neat stuff. Like blurry and octopus, that's where I get photos of all anything like that. Um, okay. I think we are all, all wrapped up. It is 10.04. Congratulations to whoever won the cute little, I'll show you one more time tonight. I need to get him varnished. Um, but there's your, whoops, what are we doing over here? That is way behind. Hold on. Scooch. Scooch. I don't know what you're doing. Why are you being weird? Don't be weird. You're being weird. Close enough. Whatever. Um, there we, wait, where is it most in focus? There we go. There is the bird, whoever just won, just won. Congratulations, because he's really cute. That is a good one. Uh, make sure to check out our moderator's channel. Thank you so, to them so much for helping. And their channels are listed below in the video description. We've got Nick Egger, uh, 
Yeah, no, I believe you start with Nick. I, I meant to say Joseph, but said Nick for some reason. Nick, he just got Starlink internet, so hopefully he can actually start uploading some stuff for us soon. He recently did a digital painting you should definitely check out. He did it for my tutorial, but his video went up way before mine. So now it's going to look like I copied him. But um, really cool video. Check that out. Check out Joseph Fincham. He does live streams every Monday. And Clark Fine Art, who also has tons of videos and live streaming. So check them out. Links are in the video description. Sign up for Patreon if you want more of my lessons. Over 400. And these are long. most of them. Some of them are quick like this. And, but most of them are the longer, more detailed lessons. At patreon.com slash lawcream. Link is in the video description if you want more information on that. Just want to kind of see what you'd get and see the video library you can head over to lawcree.com and all the links are there so i will see you guys next week and i think that's it bye